Hey everybody, we're here today with Peg Walter, longtime parishioner. Um, we're also here in uh, Father Totten's office. Uh, while he's away, especially, uh, we're making movies and enjoying ourselves. But Peg is unable to be with us um, at your farewell celebration, Father, on Saturday night. So she wanted to be sure to deliver your roasting virtually. So here she is, Peg Walter. Thank you, Benjamin. The big question of the day for you, Father Totten, is did you plan the gathering for this evening because you knew in advance that I would be celebrating an event with my family and I wouldn't be able to roast you? Come on, Father. You may be able to run and skate, but you cannot hide. When you first began your ministry at St. Charles, I introduced myself by telling you that this was my community and I would do everything I could to support you. And if anyone gave you any trouble, I had some Tai Chi moves, you know. I would use on them if I needed to. If I recall, your response was, I'm going to remember your name. You have come a long way, Father, from a lad who lost your mother at such an early age, who was supported by many, especially your aunt and uncle, Mary and Ron Elliott, who is now Father Ron Elliott. We learned very quickly after your arrival at St. Charles just how dedicated you were to rising early for a quick walk, run through our community. And from that came your encouragement for our members and beyond to get involved in the St. Charles Charter Challenge, which supported our church and school. Thank you for the gifts you have brought to our community. Sharing of background information in your homilies about the lives of the saints and martyrs that have provided a deeper impact on the gospel message. And your reverence displayed at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Thank you for teaching us by your example to face our weaknesses and seek healing. What a courageous thing you have done for us. Your recent pastor's pondering in the June 5th bulletin gave us an insight into your determination to learn to skate and play hockey about the same time at the age of 34. Francis Saladino and I were avid hockey fans along with the Mangold family and a few others I may have overlooked when your team, the Great Apes, played at Lime Creek. Since your team moved to Independence Center, the travel time is much longer and a few remaining avid fans, Dick and Mary Jo Sheets, Carol Dobney, Francis Saladino and I still ventured out to cheer your team on with signs and loud cowbells. However, I must admit, it was a little difficult to see our pastor, that would be you, young Padre, sitting in the penalty box on occasion. Is that a sin? At one game, your fans were horrified to see you and an opposing team member duking it out mid-rink until we all realized you both had set it up to entertain the crowd. Because of the distance and the lateness of many games, we've been hounding you to see about getting us a church limo to transport us there, but it still doesn't seem to be in the budget. When I heard you had been reassigned to another parish, I asked you if I should sell all of the cowbells we used at your games, and you told me absolutely not, and that you were still planning to play for the Grape Apes the further distance than you are now. So for the time being, we will tuck the bells away for another day. In closing, and aren't you glad that I am, Father, I would like to leave you with this message from Marguerite Few, a song of service. 
If all my pain and all my tears and all that I have learned throughout the years could make one perfect song to lift some fallen head, to light some darkened mind, I should feel that not in vain I serve mankind. May God bless you, Father Totten, as you continue to follow the path the Holy Spirit has set for you. Love and prayers, Peg.